In this tutorial, this is what we're trying to achieve. A customizable character that makes use of Unity's sprite animations using sprite sheets. This isn't just basic color changing, but changing the appearance as well. For this tutorial, I have five different sprite sheets of hamsters. Here it's important that, for example, here our idle animation, that each idle animation has the same amount of frames. In this case, that's four frames. Next to that, I made one main sprite sheet with a specific name that we'll have to check in code later. I've already laid out a scene here with our character. Also, I've made a standard idle animation and set this up already. And next to that, I sliced up all the sprite sheets accordingly. First of all, you want to make a new script to customize your character, of course. Uh, you can name it whatever you want, as long as it's clear to you what the script actually does. First of all, we're going to add a couple variables which we're going to need, which is integer for the skin number. Then we're going to have a variable skins. We will make a struct for this in a bit. And then, of course, the sprite renderer, since we're going to change the sprites. Now we will set up the struct for our skins and the sprites. I'll show an inspector what this does. Uh, just follow along. And don't forget that you have to make the struct serializable, or else it won't show up in the inspector. Then in our start function, we want to get our sprite renderer component. Next up, we're going to make a function to choose the skin. Uh, I'll call this one skin choice. Basically, first we're going to check if our sprite renderer component has the sprite name that contains our main sprite sheet. For my sprite sheet, I've called this one hamster main. And so if it detects that the sprite is called hamster main, we're going we're gonna to change this one out for our new skin. So first of all, we want to get a string sprite name from the sprite renderer component. And then we actually want to remove the letters from this and just get the number back. So I'm going to replace the hamster main underscore here from the name of my sprite and just remove that. And now we only have a number remaining. And after that, we want to turn this string into an integer since we only have a number in our string. So from our idle animation, we will either get back 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4. After that, we want to change our sprite from our sprite renderer actually to the skin number that we've selected. So then we're going to set our sprite to the correct skin number. So from our struct skins, we're going to take the skin number. So we have the correct one. And then from this one, we want, of course, the correct sprite according to the animation. Now, of course, we need to call this function. And uh, we're actually not going to put this in the update function, but we're going to put this in the late update function. If you're going to put it in the regular update function, this will not work. Uh, you actually have to put it in the late update function. This is because the late update function gets called after a frame changes in the animation. And because of this, you can actually change the sprites during the animation. Then we go back to our inspector and we're actually going to look at the struct. And here you can see you can add multiple skins. In my case, I have five skins, so I'm going to add five. And then you can open up these elements and you'll see that our sprites are in there. Oh, well, they're not in there yet. We're going to have to drag them in there right now. So that's what I'm going to do. Just lock the inspector and then select your sprite sheets and drag them in here. Now everything is actually set up already. And as you can see, we can just change the skin number and our hamster skin will change. Of course, now a little thing is if your skin number goes above the amount of sprite sheets you have. So in this case, if I put five, I'm gonna get an error since there aren't that many skins. So I'm going to make a quick little fix for that in the update function. Basically, if the skin number exceeds the amount of skins that there are, it will reset the skin number back to zero, which means if you put it on five, it goes back to the first one. And then I'm going to do the same for the other way around. So if it goes to minus zero, I want it to reset back to the last skin. And that's it. Now everything is working correctly. I can just scroll through the skins and our hamster skin will change. Then of course, next to that, you can add more to it, like UI elements to actually change your skin. I've set up a couple buttons here. If I click the one on the right, it goes to the next skin. If I click on the one on the left, it goes to the previous skin. And it's basically as simple as adding one to the skin number or subtracting one. Then next to that you can of course expand it even more, maybe add some accessories like I did here. Basically exactly the same process uh, except I added now a child component and it's exactly the same like I just explained. And just like that you can make simple customizable characters using sprite sheets. So now we can easily add new skins. We just have to make the art and we could just drag them in here and everything works perfectly fine. 
Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you learned something. Feel free to leave a like on the video if you did. Comment if you think something could have been done better. Hope you have a nice day and goodbye.